Hi, in today's video I'm going to explain how the array set as series function in MQL5 works. So I'm going to start off with the theory and then I'm going to show you a practical example. First off, let's look at this beautiful graphic I have created in Paint. <laughs> and yeah, as you can see, that's a normal array. You have your indexes starting with index zero. And then in this case, we have five elements going from index zero to index four. And the oldest element will always be at index zero. And whenever you add a new element to your array, it will be added at the end. However, in MQL5, this can be not problematic, but it's more difficult to work with in some situations. For example, when you want to get the data of previous bars, let's say you want to get the high or low of a previous bar and you want to store it in an array, you want to have the newest data at index zero. So that's why we are using the array set as series function, because as you can see right here, when you set an array as a series, the newest element will always be stored at index zero. So when you want to get the open price of the current bar, for example, you know that you can always call the element at index zero, because this will always be the newest element and whenever there's a new bar, it will appear at index zero. So let's look at this concept in practice. I have just created a brand new expert advisor and I'm going to give you a small example inside the onInit function. So let's just say we want to get the data from the previous bars. So I'm just going to create an array of type MQL bars. Uh, sorry, of type MQL rates, which stores the previous bar data. And let's, let's copy the previous bar data of the current, of the current symbol and the current period starting from index zero, which is the current bar for the past five bars. And let's copy all those data into the bar array. And now let's, let's use a normal for loop to print the data to the console. So as you can see, I haven't set the bar array as a series yet. So let's start at index zero and let's loop as long as I is smaller than the size of our bar array. And let's just say alert, we are going to print the index as well as let's say the opening time because that's the easiest to work with in this example. So let's also say alert array not a series and then let's say set as series and then actually let's let's use the array set as series function the, we want to use the bar array so we want to set the bar array as a series and we also have to pass the boolean to. And now let's use the same for loop again. Okay, never mind, let's just copy it. Let's compile it, see, okay. We do have some arrows, arrows here. Uh, okay, my bad. Of course, 
array size, not array resize. Okay, so let's check it out. Okay, so here we are inside the strategy tester. And as you can see here, as of right now, the array is not set as a series. And at index zero, we have the date right here and the actual time. So 23 or 11 p.m. 11.10 is at index zero. However, at index one, we have 11.20. So that's more up to date. And at the last index, the newest element is 11.50. So here you can see when an array is not set as a series, the most up to date data will always be at the highest index. However, then we go ahead and actually set the array as a series. And here at index zero, we have the most up to date candle, which is the current one, which is still in the process of developing, which doesn't have a closing price as of right now. Okay. So there you can see why the array set a series function is so important. Whenever you work with previous bar data, you always want to set the array as a series to, to know that at index zero will be the current candle. Okay. So that's it for today. If you've learned something new, feel free to leave a like and see you in the next video. Bye.